Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial. I'm your host, Gilly Gill. Today we're talking about video transitions. Now, I want to warn you, video transitions, although are very helpful to tell your story, to pass time, to move you from one location to another, they are widely overused and overusing transitions is the surest sign of getting you labeled as an amateur. And nobody wants that, ever even if you are an amateur. But a properly used transition can help enhance the visuals in your video and help you tell the story a little bit better. Let's dive right into Premiere and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so I've created a new project already and I brought in some video clips and I'm gonna choose these just as I did in a recent video. In this clip, we are in a grocery store and I'm grabbing a bag of Jolly Ranchers. Let's mark the endpoint. We're getting closer. Cool, out point, and we're gonna drag this into the timeline to create our sequence based on that clip settings, which I'm okay with. And then the very next clip, is in a completely different location. So let's choose the in and out points of that clip. Country. Country. Okay, perfect. Let's drag this one into the timeline. And as I said before, transitions are a great way to take you from one location to another. So in these two clips, we've done just that. We start in a grocery store aisle, and then we jump to a uh, garbage can scene. Now, a traditional jump cut is totally appropriate for this, but to teach you about video transitions, let's just choose a transition that I think would go well here. Within Premiere Pro, there's a ton of transitions already built into the program that you can literally drag and drop onto the cut to just kind of expedite things. You don't really have to do much extra work and there's a ton of them to choose from within the program. To find the transitions, we're gonna go into the project panel and right along the top, we have these other windows, choose effects. Inside effects, you'll see the video transitions folder. And if you twirl that open, we can see quite a few options here. We've got 3D motion, dissolve, film impact, which is a download that doesn't come with the program, immersive video, iris, page peel, slide, wipe, zoom. There's a lot to go through here. I encourage you to try these out. Drop them onto a cut, pick a dissolve, try dip to black, just drag it right onto the cut on the video track and it'll be there. So in this case, dip to black does just that. It just dips to black and, and that's it. When you wanna modify these transitions, you can just, you can click and drag it so that it starts earlier in the previous clip or later in the following clip. And you can just kind of adjust the transitions that way. Let's say you want the transition to happen faster. You can just drag it and shrink it just like you do any other clip and the whole entire transition changes dynamically or you can drag it out longer so that dip to black happens longer. Or if you wanna delete it and try again, you just click on the transition and delete it. Now what I think would go well here is something that I use pretty frequently. If you look over here down on the slide folder and you take a look at the push transition. So let's drag push onto that. And you can tell if you just scrub it, it's pushing the previous frame out while the new frame pushes in. And for whatever reason, that particular transition is one that I use a lot. Just personal preference, no real, like, no real reason why. I just like how it kind of pushes from one to another. And I will compound that visual transition with some audio. So once I get my transition in there, I'm actually gonna shrink it up a bit because I like these to happen pretty quickly. Let's preview that. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go into my folder and I already have a, a whip sound effect. So I'll just drag this sound effect and nudge it to where the majority of the sound effect is happening right at the cut. And now, instead of just the video going from one place to another, we have this audio to help it along. So pretty cool, right? You can take any audio clip that kind of fits with the transition. I think the speed of the push is certainly appropriate for a whip sound effect. One of the most common transitions is a dissolve, and you can use something that they call a cross dissolve. That's where you like very cleanly uh, fade. You kind of drop the opacity of the first clip 
and then bring in the opacity of the second one. They kind of just bleed together. Uh, that's a very dramatic, a very moody transition that you would use for something like a, a slow clip or just a nice long fade from one clip to the next. Again, choosing the right transition kind of depends on what's happening in the scene, what kind of scene you're jumping to from the previous one. There's a lot of things to consider when choosing the right transition. And also, like I said before, you don't want to overuse transitions. Transitions can become something that just distracts you from the story that you're trying to tell. So aside from the transitions that are built into Premiere, you can download uh, third-party transitions like this one that I found. This transition pack that I found is called Chungda Transitions. So Chungda's transition pack is a little complicated to implement and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check these out. I use these a lot. I think he's done a really good job at setting up these effects, but the way to implement these transitions are dramatically different from the default transitions included into Premiere. So let me show you what I mean. So in Chungda, we have some options like edge spin, RGB split. We can roll the frame. We can spin, swish pan, or zoom. I really like the zoom transitions. And once you open the zoom transition pack, you can see like, what does all this mean? Here's how it works. So at the cut, you wanna hold shift and you wanna arrow left three times and cut the clip. Get back to the cut, shift arrow right three times and cut the clip. And what we're doing is we're creating separate portions of these clips to apply these effects to. These are more of like a preset rather than, uh, you know, like a transition, but they work together. They've been designed to work together. So this is how they work. So let's say we want to zoom in. So at the end of our grocery scene, we're going to zoom in and it's going to continue to zoom in until we get to this scene. You'll know what I mean here in a second. So what you do is you take Chung Da zoom in in and you put it on the end point of this second clip. And if you play that back, you can see how it works. And you'll notice it doesn't look quite right because this is all dependent on the playback resolution, which is something we haven't really gone over yet. Basically put playback resolution allows you to see the fullest quality of your video while you're playing back, which will degrade the performance of your computer if you don't have a super powerful computer. <coughs> But so to keep your computer performance at its optimal, you'll choose quarter playback for 1920 by 1080 clips and it'll play back really well. So that's why when your playback transitions like this, you're gonna see that black line, but you'll notice when you switch it to full resolution, you don't see that line, it's like seamless. Okay, so we've applied the zoom in to our in part of this clip and we need to apply the zoom in out to the out part of this clip. And if you play it back, this is what happens. Let's try that again at full resolution. You can see it stutters a bit because it doesn't really, it has to render those effects. Okay, that looked pretty decent. I wouldn't choose an artistic transition such as that for this specific couple of clips, but let's say you were moving through a doorway and you wanted to just kind of jump forward through that doorway. Or even if you wanted to shoot through a pane of glass, you would shoot a clip on the outside of the glass up to it and then use that transition to go then on your next clip on the other side of the glass to move through it. It just kind of helps like, create this really cool effect. These third-party transitions are definitely worth taking a look into. Now, you aren't limited to using like software transitions, like the ones pre-built into Premiere or third-party downloadable transitions or effects presets. You can do transitions in camera. So yeah, basically in-camera transitions can be easily done to take you from one place to another really quickly. And like, you don't really know what's happening in the edit and just as fast, we can be right back where we were before, just by using our camera to like move it around and c confuse the viewer. Pretty cool, right? So this is how we do that. To take you from one place. Right when we whip the camera, right when things get blurry, these will better work out for you if you're using a low frame rate, because the lower the frame rate, the more blurry your image is gonna become. So we're at 30 frames, 
And once we get that camera movement, you can see how things become blurry. So right about here, we're gonna choose our out point and we'll drop this into the timeline. So on the second clip, we're gonna choose our end point still right when things are blurry and he's coming down to us. Just kind of get rid of this brightness here. So let's advance it. Yeah, that one frame so we don't have that bright light there. And play back. To another really quickly and like, you don't really know what's happening in the edit. And just as fast, We've whip panned again, so let's take it where things are getting really blurry, like right there, and we're gonna drop that clip in. And now let's choose our, our last clip where we come back to this spot. Choose our endpoint right where things are blurry. We can be right back where we were before, just by using our camera to like move it around and c confuse the viewer. Boom, out point and we'll drop that clip in. So let's play that back once again and see how it all turned out. Easily done to take you from one place to another really quickly and like, you don't really know what's happening in the edit. And just as fast, we can be right back where we were before just by using our camera. So yeah, in-camera transitions is something that I will try to use as often as possible if I know that I need a transition while I'm filming. And as you become a better editor, you will start to think about how you're gonna edit this video while you're filming it, which is really like thinking super future, like future tense. You know how you're gonna edit, so then you can shoot for the edit. And that's pretty much it on transitions, guys. I wanna say thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Smash that like button if you thought this video was useful. Subscribe if you aren't already with notifications on, and I will see you back here on the next one.